Right, welcome back guys. I'm in Finland at the moment, visiting family, and uh, we thought we'd hire a car, because we're here for three weeks. Now, first of all, it's important to note that hiring a car in Finland is massively expensive. We've hired a five-door hatchback, pretty standard one, for three weeks, and it's cost us thousand euros. And uh, it's a pretty standard car as well. We um, booked a Volkswagen Golf, or similar, and we all know the score. You get to the rental desk, and 99% of the time it is always the or similar. And it's uh, like a Sanyong Sombrero or a, I don't know, Suzuki Cappuccino or something. But no, we looked out this time. Instead of a Volkswagen Golf, they give us a BMW. <laughs> So they gave us a 2021 BMW 118i. Now, I don't think it's the M Sport or anything, but it's not bad for a hire car, if you think about it, even though it's cost us a grand. Now, one thing that interests me is the dimensions of these things. Now, we all know new cars have grown, but this thing, obviously I've got the M3 CSL, the E46. The measurements are almost identical, and this is a one series. Now, I remember when one series were like little piddly cars. Now, this car measures 4.3 meters long, in comparison, the E46 M3 measures 4.5. So that's like 20 centimeters longer. Width is pretty much the same. This is 1.8 meters. The M3 E46 is 1.78, I think it is. So this is pretty much as wide as an E46 M3, even though it's a one series. That's the difference. That's how big cars have become. Height, obviously it's a little bit higher, uh, as you'd expect, but um, it's like five or 10 centimeters difference. Now my thoughts on the styling, I've never really been a massive fan of these these grills that just keep to keep getting bigger and bigger. These ones are pretty large, obviously not G80 size, but they are quite big, aren't they? The rest of the car looks nice. It's got the uh, the very cool lights on it. We like them. This one, one thing I've noticed, it does have a hell of a lot of road noise. Now I don't know if it's just because it's on these standard issue higher car type wheels, but yeah, it's it is pretty noisy on the road. It's weird to explain. It actually sounds a bit like a jet plane almost just from the road noise again it might just be the finished roads i don't know although the roads here are very smooth you have to excuse the mess the the dust on the roads as you can see we are in the back of beyond here so the car is going to be a little bit dusty but let me show you inside Don't watch out for mozzies so many mozzies in finland honestly they're everywhere they get you i've been bitten about 50 times already i've only been here a couple of days so inside it's as you kind of expect it's all very nice you've got the digital dash and all of this here. Uh, this one doesn't actually have any uh, any sat nav because it's just a hire car. So they, they um, kind of give you it as poverty spec. In general, it's, it's an okay place to be. For me, it's not as luxurious as I kind of expect it to be. The, the main issue for me is it makes a lot of rattles. It's for a brand new car, it's 2021. It makes a hell of a lot of rattles. Like it's as though these things here just bounce around when you're when you're driving. Down here, you've got an annoying rattle. Down there, there's a rattle. This here's got a really annoying squeak. And there's a massive blind spot. This pillar here doesn't look it from here, but it causes an absolutely huge blind spot when you're driving, trying to just pull out of junctions and look behind you a little bit. It's just it's not good at all. And it's it's all right. It's a 2021 high car. They've done 30,000 kilometers, which is about 20,000 miles. But still, I would not expect it to rattle as much as it does. In comparison, my M3, the CSL, is what 17, 18 years old, has no rattles at all. It's just I don't know build quality. Maybe I'm not sure. It has a uh, 1.5 liter uh, three cylinder engine. Let me show you. To get to it, you have to pull this twice, and then it shouts at you. Let's go check it out. When you open it, again, typical hire car. Look at this, all nice and shiny on the outside. And then in here, look at the dust. Look at this, it's like it's been rally crossed or something. But yeah, 1.5 litre, three cylinder inline turbo. Does 16, about 8.5 seconds. It's got 140 brake horsepower. I think about 240-ish Newton meters. So it's not exactly the fastest thing, but you wouldn't expect it to be. It's quick enough though. Round to the boot. I think it's got about 380 litres of space in the boot. Now, just in real world terms, this is the size. And what fits in here? We managed to get a full-size suitcase, a couple of bags, 
um, a few bags of sweets down here, all the essentials, and it was it's big enough. It's not it's not exactly the, the smallest. And obviously you've got your, your three-way split in seat as well if you need that. In the back, obviously we've got the car seats here. Quite a bit of leg room. It's not too bad. Again, it's plenty big enough for your kids. Adult size, it's fine. You don't really bang your head on this. It goes all the way back, nice and flat. Uh, but yeah, it's it's an okay car really. You can't really complain. And now to what I absolutely loathe about new cars. I don't just think it is this, it is new cars in general, so it's not a dig at BMW, but the driver assists. My God, with, with hire cars, this should give you a warning that these cars have these driver assists that can just intervene and take over. I'm a, a fine driver. I, I'm a fine driver. I know how to drive cars. I don't need all of these little assists just to like take over randomly. For me, the most annoying thing is this has something called steering intervention, which is when you are changing lane, if it thinks that you're falling asleep or something, it does all this weird stuff. The steering wheel starts to vibrate. It will try and steer for you. This actually caught me off guard. We were driving away from the airport, got on the motorway. As we were driving along the motorway, just changed lanes normally. And I was suddenly shocked when the steering wheel started doing something random. I thought, have I got a puncture? What's going on? And it tried to steer me. And I had to then force it a little bit more and aggressively change lane and at that point it came up with all these notifications saying you know uh, keep in lane so it was obviously some kind of safety intervention but i was on a motorway i couldn't stop it and it was only later when i googled it the, there's, there's a button here that you have to press and then you can set all of these on so intelligent safety all on individual you want it all off basically or you can configure the individual mode but my lord it, it was just not nice at all for about an hour driving on the motorway i literally had to adapt my driving to aggressively turn into a new lane just so that it wouldn't set the alarm off which kind of contradicts the whole safety element of, of what the, the system's trying to do um so yeah once i turned it off it was fine but that was a real peeve a real pet hate also i think it's just has just too many electrical gubbins going on there was another warning literally within not even half an hour driving the car, we got this flash coming up saying oil level critically low refill. And we thought, well, it's only done 29,000 kilometers. It's the hire company's responsibility anyway to make sure the car is supplied with oil. You don't have to do that as the, the person hiring the car. So we had to stop, try and find oil. We did another test. Eventually, we could actually measure the oil. The stupid thing with this car is that it doesn't let you measure the oil unless you've been driving it for half an hour or thereabouts. So it doesn't have a dipstick in the engine, which is again, another bit of a dippy thing to do really. When we did manage to stop and measure, turned out it was just some kind of electrical gremlin. There was no issue, it was three quarters full of oil. And um, yeah, it managed to reset itself and it's gone away now. It's been absolutely fine ever since. And now we've also turned off all of the, the safety interventions. It's a nice car, it's, it's good. Would I buy one? Probably not, because I don't need this type of car. If you're buying a car to use as maybe um, like a train station car where you just have to commute, then you, you can't really go wrong. It's, you know, it's very economical. It's quiet. It, it does everything reasonably well. But I mean, I'm, I'm quite biased because I've had a lot of performance cars and SUVs and things like that. So jumping into this, I've never had a need for this specific type of car. And for me, I always just see it as it's like a, a cooking spec bmw that you use to commute and for me that it doesn't do anything really i think a lot of cars these days are going more and more towards the whole like the the entertainment aspect as opposed to the driving aspect and for this it, it's not great to drive it, it, it's the same you know it's, it's numb almost it's the same as any other i'd say like a volkswagen golf or an audi they're all pretty similar to drive this is a front wheel drive as well i would have thought being a bmw a bit rear wheel drive but again I'm of the kind of older school where, you know, there's no replacement for displacement and you should have rear wheel drive. This is, like you said, a 1.5 litre, three cylinder front wheel drive car. For me, again, I know everything moves forward, but it's not a traditional BMW in that sense. Just feels like a big car in general, like jumping in the, the E46. It's very similar. Obviously, you've got like, you know, a much smaller rear view out the back with a little kind of oval window. But in terms of the, the size, the interior cabin, is I'd say bang on with an E46. There's no difference. That's how big cars have grown to, where you're in a one series and it feels the same size as a 2003 three series. There's plenty of storage space though. You've got all of this in here. Do a Matt Watson. I don't have my drinks bottle, but I reckon you could definitely get a massive bottle in there and plenty of space in there. Plus you've got two drinks 
holders there and then just stuff all your spare change power and speed wise it's ample it's a six-speed manual this one because it's the high car and yeah it's it's quick enough for what you need if you're just going to be driving it around town it's very economical you don't need any more than this really if, if that's the type of car you're after just to chuck stuff in and get away or do your commute there's nothing wrong with this car at all to be honest so would i recommend it yes if you need a car to do your commuting in or just doing your shopping it's it's a decent enough car isn't it i think the the wheels would be, need to be a little bit nicer on this to be honest they're very small they're lost in the arches but it is just the uh the base spec one it, you know obviously they do the m sport versions and the um faster ones i'm sure they'd be more fun i wouldn't necessarily recommend it like i said if you just want something to have fun in and drive around it, it feels a little bit muted in that sense but that isn't the, the core reason someone would buy this car for the, the driving pleasure. It is more of a, a nice kind of premium brand just to, uh, to to kind of get you to work and back. So it's just a short video to give you my thoughts on the BMW 118i from 2021. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing. Give the video a thumbs up, drop a comment, and I'll see you soon.